Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be reviewing Module 8 from the Universe to the Atom, and particularly I'm going to be addressing the first inquiry question, the origin of the elements. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, Module 8 is called From the Universe to the Atom. Now, the module is divided up into five key inquiry questions, and those inquiry questions really ask some important questions about our understanding of the elements. And in particular, as we look at the inquiry questions, we see or our understanding of science develops as we build models based on evidence. So the first inquiry question asks the question, what evidence is there for the origin of the elements? The second inquiry question asks, how is it known that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? In essence, we're dealing with the atomic structure. The third inquiry question asks, how is it known that classical physics cannot explain the structure of the atom? So we're really addressing the quantum mechanical model. The fourth inquiry question digs deeper and asks, how can the energy of the nucleus be harnessed? So I'm just gonna simplify it by just writing the nucleus. And going deeper still, the last inquiry question says, how is it known that a human understanding of matter is incomplete? And throughout these questions, starting from the origins to the further exploration, going deeper and deeper to our understanding of matter, what we also cover as we do these inquiry questions, we examine how over a period of about 150 years, that evidence resulted in the development of models and those models were challenged and revised and thrown out as more evidence came in. And so that process is an important process to also appreciate in this particular module. Our first inquiry question looks really at two key events that result in the production of elements. The first is the biggest of all and is the Big Bang. And the other aspect that the syllabus looks at is looking at the production of elements within stars or specifically stellar fusion. Now, when we examine the Big Bang, the syllabus is interested in understanding two aspects. First of all, how did we develop that model for the Big Bang? In other words, what is the evidence? We're looking specifically at the advent of our understanding of the expansion of the universe and the model that we now refer to as the hubble lamarck law. But we also look at other key bits of evidence, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, and also the fact that the vast majority of the universe, in terms of at least of its elements, is made up of hydrogen. But then also you need to know the key events. The key events that resulted from the production of matter from energy and why galaxies and stars formed in the first place. Our next area is looking at stars and there are three key areas. Again, the progression is of understanding our origins of our elements. So the first thing you need to know is the fact that we can measure stars and we cover this already in module seven, which is looking at spectral analysis. And so using spectroscopy, we can understand the fact that stars are moving. We can determine their chemical composition. And importantly, we can also use spectral analysis of understanding their temperature. Once we've analyzed that, we can now start the process of classification. So how do we classify stars? Now distance is really not something we can classify stars with because that's just how far they are. But what we are interested in is in particular their brightness or intensity. We're interested in their temperature and we're interested ultimately in their size and mass. And so we can now classify stars according to those specific properties. And that leads us to a, an important graph called the HR diagram, which is covered in this particular section. But the third section says, well, okay, now that we can classify stars, we can understand how they evolve over time. And we understand the process that occurs in terms of the nucleosynthesis. So what do I mean by that? Well, we know that stars ultimately start off with one single element, and that is hydrogen. And so as a result of gravity increasing the energy in the core, hydrogen now fuses to form helium. But it's not just 
pushing two hydrogens together, it's the formation of helium through a number of key processes. And the first process that you'll learn about is the proton-proton chain, which is a process of how hydrogen converts into helium and therefore the release of energy. There's also the triple alpha cycle, and then there is the CNO cycle. In all cases, they actually are a result of energy being produced by the loss of mass because of the mass of the reactants, the hydrogen, is greater than the mass of the products, which is the helium. And so we have this process of E equals mc squared. And so that leads me to the big tip here. Understand that the origins here, the origin stories of our elements, the E equals mc squared formula plays a big part. It plays a big part in understanding why we have matter in the first place in the Big Bang. We have plays, it plays a big part in understanding why we have stellar fusion and why we get energy from our stars and in particular, of course, our own sun, which is the one that we examine most closely. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you and please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee the link is in the description below my name is paul from physics high take care and bye for now